Hey, what's going on, guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another episode of The Sit Rep. And tonight, my guest is none other than Rodimus Primal. Rodimus, how are you doing tonight? Doing good. Excellent. Very good. How are you? Do doing great, man. Ready for uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow. Hard to believe it's Thanksgiving already. Yeah, if you don't get anybody like uh, beating down your door because you have uh, you know, family coming to see you. <laughs> and again, we're, we're not like that here yet in West Virginia. Now, first off, I want everybody to know that this collar scheme was not planned. It was not. As, soon, was as, I, as soon as we turned totally the bond on, we're like, oh, man. So, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're promoting ourselves. So, yep, that's that's what we got to do. <laughs> All right, guys, for those of you who don't know how this works is the sit rep is a show that I came up with about a year ago where I have a fellow YouTuber on and I have 10 questions for him. I have 10 questions regarding him as a collector and then 10 questions re as regarding him as a YouTuber. And now that I have this brand new setup with StreamYard and better Internet, I always want to call it StreamYard. StreamYard is after I ask my 10 questions, I will open up the floor for Q&A with you guys. So, Rodimus, if you're ready to go, we'll kick things off. And we are ready to roll out. Excellent. hoo -ah. All right. My first question is Transformer Toys. Question number one, what is the appeal of Transformers for you? Um... If I were to say what my my appeal to it is, I would I love the fiction number one. I love the toys. I love the the the, the uh, puzzle aspect of trying to get that, uh, you know, whatever it transforms into into a robot. Um, just the basic concept of it itself. But it's also because they are characters. You know, uh, the the fiction itself. The um, you know how you know, the story of how, like, what, why are they fighting with each other? What, what drives each character to do what they do and how they behave is just as important as the aspect of the toy itself. And without a doubt, that's what's kept it going strong for 36 years now. Absolutely. Stories, because definitely. when you think about it, you know, if without the characters, they couldn't sell the toys. They tried doing that in the Christmas in Christmas of 1983 and with diacron and that didn't go anywhere so they realized we need a story well, okay well marvel comics you know will create who these characters are so and that's what drives the toy line just as much as the toys themselves because they become characters so you know it's not just battle convoy it's optimus prime <laughs> well what's funny is the comics that's that was my G one because I lived in Podunk, West Virginia, where you got to turn the dial on top of your TV to get your antenna just right. So yeah. I didn't have cable. So my G one that I got to experience constantly, hi Dylan, was uh, the comics. So and then of course when I come visit my grandfather in town, I'll be able to watch the cartoon. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I need help on that. I need, I'm going to start a new game and I need help on that. Okay, sorry about uh -oh. this. This normally doesn't happen. It's all right. You can, you can tell, tell my wife to send my kids up. <laughs> I saw him playing the switch and I'm like, okay, this is good. I can have an hour or two by myself. Oh, so, there you go. You want to say hi to everybody before you leave? Hi. All right. Good enough. Now, how do I start a new oh, game? Oh, I don't know how you start a new game. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Assist. <laughs> Pause for Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> New game. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Now I can do it. Okay. Let's see. 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 Okay. Let's Play Animal Crossing. No, I want to. Okay, well, you have to do. I want to play a new game with this. We're gonna play a new game after a while. Jeez, do Street Fighter. <laughs> Street Fighter, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't pause live. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> we were still on question one. <laughs> question number one, right? We was talking about the comics. Yeah, yep. my first ex first experience with the Transformers was Marvel issue number three with Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, my my first experience actually with uh, with 
Transformers was, I mean, seeing the commercials, number one, uh, you know, it is a world transformed, right? Which was the commercial actually for the Marvel comics. Um, but I didn't pick up the comic book issues. I think I remember going to a newsstand and picking up issue three. Um, but the first, I, I could be wrong on this because, you know, but my first foray into actually watching anything Transformers really besides the commercials and getting the toys was actually the episode Countdown to Extinction. So um, that was the first time I was able to catch it because it was, I believe it was a uh, once a week show at the time when it first, first aired in 1984. And so the cartoon came on once a week and then I count, I, I caught the episode Countdown to Extinction. I was hooked ever since and ended up going, finding it a newsstand. Oh, there's issue three. There's, you know, Spider-Man on the cover, I think was the, was the issue at, that when that episode aired. And, um, you know, then of course getting the toys and my first toys that I got were Bumblebee, Cliff Jumper and Starscream. So, you know, I remember quite vividly those, those three in particular. So, um, and on top of that, also getting GoBots to <laughs> fill in some gaps <laughs> where, uh, well, Transformers, you had that mismatch of just all these random bots. I had like GoBots mixed with, uh, converters. Remember those? Oh Yeah. Yep, and then you had then, then people had Voltron. You would go and play with their Voltron toy. Oh, uh, don't don't mess around with that. You got to put that back in the box. You know, it was like <laughs> like Voltron. Like they were people were really picky about their Voltron. You know, I never knew anybody that had a Voltron. Everybody yeah, had so Transformers and GoBots and He Man when I was growing up. Now you talk about <clears throat> flashing back to the original cartoon. My first mm -hmm. cartoon experience was at a video rental store it was actually when you walked into the store they had the little setup where you could sit on the couch and they always would have something playing for the kids mm -hmm. it was the ultimate doom play hey, yeah and i was like Go oh figure. my god can we get this and i remember make, making those kids mad because the lady went and popped it out of the vcr so we could rent it and this is back in the day when we had to rent the vcr with the VC, the uh, tape so. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I, I remember that it was F H E. It was like the it had the letter that go up F H E, and it was a family home entertainment, and then it was one episode per cassette. You know, if you remember, like every video cassette had one episode, like a comic style. Yeah, it was like a comic book on the back of each one. It was explaining to you what happened on the episode, and uh, that's how we ended up. We. <laughs> You know what we ended up doing because my 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 dad had more than one VCR, so we rented in the video store, and that's how we got most of season one on video cassette. You know, um, in addition to watching the reruns, so this way I can at least watch those episodes um, over and over and over and over again until I wore the tapes out. You know, uh, watched everything from um, you know uh, uh, Transport to Oblivion, War of the Dinobots, Fire on the Mountain. So just like some of my favorite episodes, Countdown to Extinction being another heavy metal war, you know, over and over and over again. Like season one, just like you can literally watch that season um, and it feels like like this is what tr everything that Transformers should they be. They had so much better stories. I mean, I think season two was cranked out so much. I mean, there were good stories in season two. Yeah. But they, they were cranked out a lot faster, so they didn't have the... Good I would even argue that if not for the animation, that a lot of season three had sometimes a lot better stories. Most of the time, a lot of times, better stories than season two, yeah. um, because they were trying to crank so many episodes out um, in you know in season two that it felt rushed. Whereas with season three, it wasn't so much the rushed story; it was the rushed uh, oh. animation. And so they used ACOM, and the ACOM animation is what makes everybody look at season three so negatively, you know, is always the animation because it's not as many Toei episodes. So I'll admit that's a big turnoff for me because of the animations, just like with comic books. There's some mm -hmm. great comic book stories out there, but the anime, the uh, drawings or the art, if it sucks, I just can't get into it. Yeah. You know, that's it's weird because, you know, as much as I love the Marvel comics, a lot of the Marvel comics were drawn eh, like I think it maybe it might have been Neil Yamtov's coloring where he oh, would draw it and like, here's Fortress Maximus 
and here's just a bunch of blue guys. Yep. You know, and you got to make out who's who because I actually did a video on the worst Marvel com- covers, but remember the one where Bruticus is versus uh, Defensor? It's they red and blue. Defensor all pink and Bruticus all blue on the cover. Yeah. Like, what was on that? The cover. Like, well, why did they do that? <laughs> you know, uh, or or in ep- in issue forty one, which the cover is beautiful, you know, because it's a big battle. But then you you get the battle on the moon itself. You open it up and you're like. What's going on here? Here's Fortress Maximus and a bunch of blue Autobots. Here's Grimlock and a bunch of Autobots. You know, um, it's not until the Decepticon show up that you can actually tell who's, you know, who's who because they actually are colored. You know, and you look, they drew in so many characters that were never in the comic before. Yep. I, yeah, I they did. A broadside is yep. in that battle, and he was mm-hmm. never featured in the comic before. I think they even. I think they. I've, I. I could be wrong on this. I've heard they actually edited him out in the UK books because he was uh, a prominent character in the UK Wrecker stories. So they had to edit him out. That could which, be because they used the UK was like fillers because Marvel came yep. out monthly, where the UK was weekly, I believe. Yep. And that's why yeah, there was so many movie characters in the UK series. Which yep. That's one thing I complain so much is I don't have all the UK stories, comics, great stories. And yep. IDW was reprinting those and then canceled it. Yeah. Five. Right before it got to the best story ever is when they canceled it. Oh, what Time Wars you're talking about? That was, the, you know, something for all it's worth, I, the UK stories is something that, I, as much as I like Simon Furman as a writer, I think that he he doesn't know how to end a story. He's really good at telling a story, but then when he goes to his ending, it just like flatlines and it happens every single time. Like it happened in regeneration one. It happened at issue 80. It happened with time wars being the conclusion to that story. It happened with, I would say even his stories that he told in, um, you know, in the, in the IDW, I think, you know, he just didn't know how to end it. Actually, it's one of my favorite stories in Marvel. He kicked things off with the Matrix quest. Yeah, yeah. Really good story. But then at the end, it was like, okay, Thunderwing has got the Matrix. A Decepticon is in possession of the Matrix. Oh, let's suck him out of the ship. Yep. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it was the Aliens ending. Yeah. It was the, you know, suck him out of an airlock. All four movies, they suck the alien out of the airlock. <laughs> You're right. So, No, part three, he went to the uh, steel. Are you looking at someone's comment there? Or? No, it was quick. I mean, it's scrolling up on the side. Oh, I was okay. the aliens part three. Uh, they dropped the alien in the steel mill. Oh, okay. Okay. I just, I, I happen to remember it was like pretty much like all of them that, that they sucked an alien They're out of the airlock. Every other one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Now, here's going to be a hard one for you because I know we're both super G1ers. Mm hmm. Aside from Generation One, which is always the number one answer, what's your favorite Transformers fiction? Um, that's a tough. It really is a tough one. It really is tough. Um, I mean, I love Beast Wars, but Beast Wars feels like it's part of G One because it's a continuation of it, and at the same time, is so good at storytelling, telling the stories of brand new characters that yet exist in the same universe as G1. So that would probably be my number one outside of G1 story. Um, Animated in Prime, I think, would follow suit afterward. And it's kind of hard to place the two of them. Which one? I would say I I would edge out. I would say Animated would edge it out higher as far as fiction is concerned. Um, Prime, uh, there's, there's something weird about Prime that feels a little... Like, I don't know if it feels off, but you know, I like I like Prime. I don't like I, I think that animated is a better a better at storytelling. My personally. biggest complaint with Prime, great art, great stories, but I hated the fact that the Decepticons were all drones. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I just I hate that it's like a cop out. I, I mean, I appreciate the Decepticons they didn't introduce were really good characters, but I hate the whole drone aspect. I mean, that's one great thing about G1. Everybody on screen was a character with yep. a personality. Yep. The drones is just is a cop out, plain and simple. Uh, you know, in animated, they made the Decepticons a real threat. Mm-hmm. 
you know, um, they they took advantage of the fact that there were more Autobots than Decepticons. So if you had Blitzwing and Lugnut, it takes five Autobots to take those two Decepticons down. Oh, now you're going to add Megatron? Then, then it's a real battle. Oh, Starscream. Starscream was enough to almost defeat all five Autobots, you know? Um, whereas in Prime, it's like they just mow down all of these uh, cannon fodder. And I feel like that is a... Um, it's a leftover from the movies, you know, whereas in revenge of the fallen was like all these Decepticons are cannon fodder, you know, yeah. not one, not one Autobot takes damage or really actually gets any showtime in the movies. So it really kind of goes, um, you know, hand in hand there, like prime feels like it's, it's trying to be the movies, but be a TV show. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I that's like why I say like animated edges it out. I did like how Prime integrated the human characters, especially with the villain that created Nemesis Prime, and they end up cyborgizing him in a way. You know, and then yep. he gets killed. I mean, he gets killed in an animated television show. Transformers. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, it was it was all it was off camera enough that they can get past the censors. Yeah. But you knew you know, his ass got crushed. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, uh, was, what's his name? He actually lived. Uh, you know, if you remember. Oh, um, he became Nemesis. Or no, he became Breakdown. Yeah, yeah. They put his they put his uh his still breathing corpse uh into breakdown where he lived, and then until he got he got infected. No, that's right, he got killed by our arachnid. Yep. Yeah, you actually watch, watch him die on Blu-ray. Yeah, he got killed by Arachnid. And she he said thank you because he was like, please kill me, kind of thing. Yeah. But they couldn't say that on network television. Now they always say, please destroy me. Yeah, well, that's because they can't say it. Like you can't do that on television. You remember that TV show? You remember that? You know, you you would say, I don't know, and then you get slimed. I, I wrote the whole paper a long time ago on animated cartoons and the toy lines and all that, like you know, how He-Man came to be all because of the Knowing is what well, He-Man didn't do it, but he had the lesson at the end. And then G.I. Joe with the knowing is half the battle. And that's how they yep. got away with making those violent toy commercials for us. Yeah. Well, you know, the the thing about the shows themselves is that they were designed for that. Mm -hmm. um, the best way I can say that is like He-Man specifically um, was made to be, to have morals at the end of every episode. That was their primary goal of every every episode they wrote was to be to have those morals, you know. Um, GI Joe they were much looser, but they made sure that there was a lesson in the episode in the story, because that was one of the great things about the '80s TV show storytelling was that all right we're going to have all this action the good guys are going to beat the snot out of the bad guys and they're going to all this stuff is going to happen but there's a lesson in the story. You know, and Transformers even did it. G.I. Joe did it. He-Man did it. Ninja Turtles even did it. The you one know? I remember the most that's just Thundercats a, was Brave Star. Remember the drug episode where the kid died at the end of Brave Star and it was all about just say no to drugs? I don't remember that episode. This no. kid was hooked on something. There was a drug dealer in town. He looked like an like alien coyote guy. But I do remember... Died. I do remember the He-Man episode where the girl basically got yeah, put on drugs and she, Oh yeah. You know, yep. She was, she was a Valkyrie a looking girl. Episode. What's that? <laughs> she was high as a kite that whole episode. I remember. Yeah, that she one. was. <laughs> oh, good stuff. All right. Now let's go on to your toy collection. Question number three, do you have a favorite figure or grail? Something you will never let go of. You have to sell everything. But this figure is not going anywhere. I got a few. It's hard to pick. I am torn if I would sell it, but I probably would if absolutely had to. I have a Car Robots Brave Maximus. Um, he's loose, but I have him. Um, and he's in the same container as um, my Metroplex and Trypticon and Predaking. Um and yeah, uh, he is one that I, I, I might like kind of be torn if I had to sell him, 
but one I would probably and, and any any toy that's Rodimus Prime, I probably would never sell. Even if even if the toy is like terrible, I would probably keep it. Like even Energon Rodimus, I would end up keeping. Um, you know, so if I had to sell my Unicron trilogy, uh, you know, toys or whatever, I would keep the Rodimus, you know, out of that set. But specifically this bad boy right here um is my Takara 2001 reissue Megatron. He is not the, the 1984 release or 85 release. He's actually the Japanese reissue and what makes him special is first of all he turns into a gun. So right. you know in New Jersey that's you know a big no-no now. Uh <laughs> even even like take you know you have to keep him in robot mode if you need to transport him uh in New Jersey. Um and he comes with the sword, which the American release did not have. Is that pegs into the side of his fist? What's that? Yeah, he pegs into the side of his fist. Yep. Yep. And he can fire pellets. The spring does work. And he comes with a little pack of pellets. Um that is one that you know that is one I wouldn't sell. And another one is I don't know if I would be able to sell him, but this is a Radio Shack uh, Galaxy Man painted purple. I it's bought him this him one. up, and I saw that trigger. I'm like, that's not Shockwave. <laughs> it is Shockwave, but it's ga it's the Galaxy Man. It's the same mold, but he's you know the trigger it's is Shockwave. Yeah, it's a little different. And he uh, the, the rubber hose is, has been repaired multiple times. Uh, which you can kind of see, and you know, but he is purple, uh, very purple, but it's painted purple. So, and you know, he's got the same problem that any shock G one Shockwave toy has is that the springs on his legs don't hold him up anymore. So you have to kind of bend his knees just to get him to stand, and that barely gets him to stand. So it's like, it I might sell him if I had to, but probably not. <laughs> You know, but he is definitely one I would keep, you know, probably if I had to sell everything else kind of thing. Like geez, just a few that, you know, like that, like that I would, uh, I would do so. All right. Well, question number five regarding the toys. I know the answer to this. Everybody watching knows the answer to this. What's your favorite Transformer character? <laughs> um, if, <laughs> if, if, if my name doesn't, clearly ring a bell it's obviously rodimus prime and uh the reason why i love this this character so much is because he isn't optimus prime optimus prime needs to be on a pedestal so that someone like rodimus prime can rise to the occasion like he's not perfect he doubts himself he's me i doubt myself a lot you know i as a person i i feel a lot of times that you know um I, I, that I can't do this. I can't like, I'm, I'm trying to make, you, you know, YouTube videos. I'm trying to take care of a family. I'm trying to be the man of the household, you know, trying to take care of this stuff for, for, you know, anything that I'm trying to take care of. And I, 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 I get a lot of self doubt. So I relate to Rodimus prime so much because of that. And he's put in a, a position of responsibility, but he wants to go back to the days of old. He wants to go back to that, you know, um, days of like being young and fast and free and being able to like, you know, not have to worry about all this responsibility. And, but when you're an adult, you have to deal with that. And that who is who Rodimus prime is as a character and why he's so important. And without that character growth, you know, it's the reason why Optimus prime needs to be infallible. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's one of the reasons why, modern takes on Rod on, on Optimus Prime actually t take away from Rodimus because if Optimus is willing to, you know, like in the IDW comics, when he kills Galvatron point blank, I'm here to end you. Well, that takes away from Rodimus that, that looking up to Optimus Prime to, to be, I, I see who my hero is and I know I can't be him, but I, and I doubt myself quite a bit, but, if I can overcome, I could be just as good, but yet be myself. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I love the character of Rodimus Prime because he has to learn. And it took him an entire season of having a lot more, much more responsibility than Optimus ever had. 
he had he had to take care of the fact that he was now in control of Cybertron. He had Autobot City on Earth to produce Energon cubes. He had uh, intergalactic you know, uh, peace conferences to keep. So he had a lot of stuff to take care of. He had the, the threat of both uh, the Decepticons and the Quintessons. So he had a much bigger plate, and yet he had to do all of that. And while he was doing well doing it, he doubted himself. Whereas Optimus was like, I can do anything because he's Superman, but he's supposed to be Superman. He's supposed to be the father unit. He's supposed to be that, you know, the dad that you look up to. You know, Rodimus Prime is supposed to be the one that you're supposed to grow into. Now that you're a kid, you become Rodimus Prime, but you look up to your dad kind of thing. Yeah. And that's that's the importance of those two characters. So there's my answer <laughs> in a long, long, long way. I absolutely love it. Well, yeah. that pretty much wraps up our Transformers toy questions. Now we're going to go and get to know you as a YouTuber. And my first question, after I scroll up a little bit. Yeah, I got to do the same thing. YouTube question number one, what possessed you, a grown man, to do toy reviews or toy discussions on YouTube? Well, it it's the thing about toy reviews. I, I started doing toy reviews after I had already done, um, you know, a lot of the discussion videos. I started learning how to do video editing um, back in 2015, like in early 2015, you know, I've gotten some video editing software and I already have a graphic design background. So, um, you know, trying to do a lot of like graphic art stuff and and never was able to get my foot in the door anywhere I went. And um, but also being a hardcore Transformers fan, you know, the things that we used to talk about all the time were things like who became Cyclonus? What's the right color for Rumble? What's the origin of the Constructicons? What became of Dion? Um, you know, it did hot rod is hot rod actually responsible for killing optimus prime you know those are things that people always always talked about on message boards and they talked about it at nauseum to the point where all right well if i gather all the facts and make a video out of it let's do something about it and at the same time i was also doing something like uh you know uh video game i wanted to do video game reviews as well i was kind of like oh maybe i could do like a not angry video game nerd, <laughs> um, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of video game reviews because, you know, but they were kind of, you, you get washed out because there's so many people who are doing video game reviews and I wanted to try and focus on transformers as well. So I ended up doing who be I did uh, the transformers devastation video game review. And then I did who became Cyclonus and um, who became Cyclonus was um, how would I put this? Uh, it was like was a it was a learning experience for me because you know you're learning how to like get it video clips and take what you need to try and put it all together and get the images of the toys and get images of this and get video of that or video of this and putting it all together. It was really a learning experience for me. And um, that's basically where it all started. And I kept going once that video became, you know, much more popular and I've had to redo it multiple times, but you know, because you learn from your own experience. And then after a couple of videos, I said, well, okay, why don't I do some toy reviews as well? I like, try to like incorporate a little bit of toy, you know, reviews with toys. And um, so I, I did, I think Titans return was new at the time. So like I did the Titans return hot rod figure and um, that's where I kind of like learned how to actually, do the um you know like try to like do a setup that works for rodimus prime I mean, not rodimus prime for for uh, the toys themselves on a, on a on a shelf and to review them and um try to manipulate it around a camera <laughs> you know you got the camera here and you gotta like reach around and That's get to manipulate the toy understand what we have to deal with when doing this oh yeah like, and then you have to get the lighting just I, right I'll knock my camera off well yeah like or not, you know, like knock into the camera and make it shake while you're trying to like transform the figure. Because it's not like you're doing a figure, you know, an action figure review, like you know, like like a He-Man figure or a Ninja Turtle, where you can just show off the posability and say this is a great figure and get it done in six minutes. No, you got to transform it into both modes, and you got to like 
explain the, why the transformation is good or bad or why why RC does, you know, her being a shell former doesn't work or does it not work, which is one of my for most recent toy reviews. Uh, so <laughs> that's why I like the repaints, because if I've done the one video on the initial character, I always do that cheat. Now I'm skipping transformation. If you would like to see that, check out this video and I'll just go right to it. Yeah. Or you can fast do a fast forward take if you really, really wanted I've to. I've done those on my studio series because I love some of those studio series figures, especially the Bumblebee ones. But my God, they're a pain to transform. And I'm good with it until I get on camera. As soon as you get on camera, you forget everything. Yeah. yeah, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you can do things from memory, you know, yeah, that's, that's where my G1 reviews come in. That's like that. Yeah. Where you can literally do it like without even looking at the actual figure. Yeah. I know what you're doing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to do it without, uh, you know, just feeling it, you know, where, where basically just glancing to make sure that you're not breaking something, <laughs> but go ahead. It's to be. <laughs> it's funny you talk about how you uh, kind of got started with video games. That's how this came to be. I worked uh, at a casino with a bunch of military, prior law enforcement military guys. We worked all night shifts. So when we're off work, we were playing PlayStation at night because we can't sleep anyway. And one of my friends was like, hey, let's do a Twitch channel and do our video gaming online. I'm like, I am not that good at video games to do anything online. And he says, why don't you do a YouTube channel? You can do that and you can attach it to Twitch. I'm like, what am I going to talk about on YouTube? Well, you know them Transformer things, don't you? And there we go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right, sir. Question number seven. What keeps inspiring you to get in front of this camera? Um, I would say it's multiple things. The, um, I would say it's the, the, the love of the brand, you know, the fact that I, I do love, you know, Transformers, you know, my passion for it, which is kind of why my second channel is kind of like teetering is because I like Transformers probably the most out of any other franchise, you know, Star Wars and Godzilla and He-Man and Ninja Turtles and everything else. It's like, okay, I want to talk about all that other stuff too, but I've got to do a lot more stuff for Transformers. So um, there's that. But there's also my, you know, so many of, you know, everybody out there that's that's been watching my videos for how long and enjoying them. Um, it's been a uh, an absolute pleasure talking to people who, you know, they've never seen G1. And I bring a G1 flair to something that they've never seen before. So now they get a, a knowledge on G1 that I can give. Um you know, or that longtime fan that probably disagreed with me 15 years ago back on a message board. And now they're like, oh, I love your videos, but I disagree with you. I still think it's bombshell or, you know, no rumble is the red one or, you know, like you get people who still disagree with you on that or like they were, you know, you might have remembered their name uh, or their website that they used to have. Remember Angel Fire websites? I think it was Angel Fire. I think so. Like, I think that was the website that people hosted their own, like, like a, like a web, like it was almost like a MySpace, but it wasn't a MySpace. Like you can create your own website on an Angel Fire website or something. Okay. I, yeah. I know what you're yeah. Talking about. And there was that. And so people had like, I think one, you know, a bunch of different people had uh you know, Transformers message, uh, Transformers, um, uh, you know, web you know, fan pages and, you know, you would, and Geocities, Geocities was the other one. That's right. And uh, like those people like would, would, uh, would, you know, or now you now see their names in the comment section, but you know, you get, begin to start, it starts building a community. You know, we, we the transformers has grown into a, a, even more of a community because of the online presence, you know um, you know, I'll give an example. Like I, I went to like before this whole lockdown of everything, one of the most recent transformers, um, you know, conventions, that's actually, it was a collector's convention I went to. Um, it was weird getting recognized, you know, but a lot of people started recognizing me and I started getting to know the, the guy who owns the website TFW 2005. You know, I think he lives within the area of me, uh, at least, at least maybe within driving distance. And he's the guy that actually made the theme song that I use 
for my, my, my main theme. And he did it like he has it all listed on his website. And uh, I ended up telling him like, yeah, I'm actually using that. He's like, that's awesome. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. That's you know? So it's kind of cool to like grow in the community with a bunch of different people. Um, you know, people who disagree with me on, on, on things, you know, and I don't talk politics, you know, um, I have political views that probably a lot of people disagree with. So, um, so I keep it to myself, you know, um, that, you know, I don't talk about it on my, on my, uh, on my YouTube channel, um, at all. You know, I'd rather ha enjoy the franchise for what it is. So that was a biggest hurdle for me when I started because of my name. And you have no idea the horrible comments I would get politically based attacked yep. me because of the name, because of the flag. And I almost quit doing this so many times. And then I just, I hit my stride and it finally stopped. And of course, and now I love this community. This has amazed me, especially over the last year of how we've all, I mean, like you and I, for example, yep. how everybody has just bonded so much over these plastic robots. We have. We have. And and the thing is, is that, you know, I, I don't get why people would hate you for being a patriot, for loving your country, for loving. Like we live in America. We should love our country. There are people who, um, you know, who live in, um, you know, they live in, uh, you know, the UK. They love their country. Let them love their country. People live in, in uh, you know, I, I, I can tell I look at my analytics. There are people who live in Australia. They love their they love their country in Australia. Let yourself be a patriot and love your country. There is, there is a, a, it's not a political statement to say that you love your country, you know, and to say that you're a patriot for your country, you know, and you served, you served. And that, and for that, I salute you, you know, I'm not a good at saluting. So don't, don't judge me on that one. <laughs> All right. My brother might be a Marine, but I'm not a military guy. <laughs> so, but go <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, go on to number eight. There are thousands of toy reviewers, probably more than that now. Uh, on YouTube, what makes you different from the rest? And I'm going to have to say it's your discussion videos because I, I play a lot of those while I'm at work. Granted, I don't watch them as much. They're playing in the background. But yeah. I do enjoy them, and I like your perspective on things. So I know that's one of the things that makes you different. Anything else you think that sets you apart from the rest? That's I would pr pretty much say that. I, I think it might also have to do with you know, how I present things, I, you know, I come across sometimes people, my, my mother always said, like, maybe you should have been a teacher, you know, um, because I just have a knack for training people and for teaching people. So I kind of apply that to my discussion videos. And that is kind of like a skill, I guess, that I might have missed the boat on in, in, in pursuing is learning how to be a good, a good teacher and so maybe I'm applying my love for transformers as a, as a teaching method in that respect. But at the same time, I have my opinions and everybody has their opinions. I have my opinions about, um, you know, the origin of the Constructicons. I have my opinions about Rodimus Prime, a character that people just absolutely hate, you know, with a passion. And I've had to defend him for 30 something years, <laughs> you know, and I absolutely love the character and I, and, and I can, I can defend him without being insulting. And some people do, you know, hoping to, to bridge that gap of having different opinions and being able to bridge that gap. And that's probably why I, I enjoy doing the retrospectives and discussion videos. So, um, you know, more than the news, more than the, uh, you know, the toy reviews is, but to, but the thing is, is if I am doing a toy review, it's because I really want to like show off the good, the bad and the ugly of that toy. And I, sometimes I, I, it probably is why my toy reviews would run longer than some other people. Like some people can do a toy review in eight minutes and I'll end up taking 26 minutes to do a toy review. <laughs> so a, it's, it, I just did a review the other day on, uh, well, I don't have him here. He's that little battle master turns into a ramp and by the time the video was done i was like how did i spend 10 minutes talking about that guy yeah <laughs> by laying over <laughs> and i spent yeah. 10 minutes on him it just like just it's it's not even a transformation it's kind of like the battle chargers right or uh the, the throttle bots and i need to do i still gotta do a g1 review on those i've been asked to do that so many times 
I, I need to do a, uh, a probably a discussion video on the throttle bots because they're they get overlooked, especially. I mean, even Goldbug. I mean, Goldbug is Bumblebee, yeah. which is probably how they were trying to use well, that as a selling point. They were so prominent in Marvel Comics. A lot of people don't realize that they were like the main Autobot team for a long time in Marvel Comics. Oh, you can yeah. stick her up there. Talk about her. That's your newest I'll review. Yeah, I ended up reviewing RC. I customized her quite a bit. This is Earthrise RC, even though it doesn't look like Earthrise RC because she's been customized. I ended up painting her in places where she should have been ha have have paint, and I even lopped off her feet. You know the those big snowshoes. You know, so she has like much nicer feet now, and uh, she the ankle tilt still works. She can still hold her balance. And it looks more like how her G1 animation model is supposed to have the white there. And even the back of her hat, even the back of her collar here has been painted. So that's why I've passed her up. I've, I've picked her up a couple times in the store. I'm like, she just looks like crap. It's like there's these Earthrise figures have blown me away with their sculpted detail and paint applications. But they just got lazy with her, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's the paint. I think it's the paint that... If they colored her in properly, there would be there would be less of an issue. She does have a QC problem. People were wondering what I did to fix the problem that I had here. Um, this there the issue I had here was the panel did not line up properly. Like it was actually jutting out a little bit, and the reason why is because the white plastic piece here that's connecting um, there is a pink tab on the car itself that sticks out not just the whole piece like if you look at i don't know if you can kind of see it I believe um it. trying to like show it from here if you can see it but like there is a uh, there we go this there's a tab here but underneath the white part there is another pink tab that sticks up and if it's not connecting this is going to end up being a QC problem for you. So what I actually did was I used a pin and I knocked out the pin to take the whole backpack assembly off. And then once I, once I did that, I took a, uh, a an exacto knife and I got underneath and I cut the, the, the tab itself just a bit, just kind of like making it a little bit more smooth. And then once I did that, the whole part was able to clip in there but it didn't stay. So I got some Gorilla Glue, got the Gorilla Glue in there, clamped it closed and held it for like a good two minutes and let pretty much like sat there for like two minutes, pressing as hard as I could. And then once I did, she, you know, it stayed the way that it did. And once I had her apart, I was like, all right, I have her in pieces. Now that I fixed her, let's paint her. You know, and that's when I decided to start painting all the parts. But I took her apart, and I show how many pieces uh, in my review, how many pieces I actually took and to fix her. That's review, right? You put that up today. I did. I did. Yeah, so everybody go check that out after you leave here. Definitely. <laughs> so that was – it was just a matter of time, like, like of all the work that I did on her. I mean, you can already see, like, her gun is painted. Oh, you that, know, that's the first thing I noticed the gun and the lipstick. Yep. Yep. The lipstick was a big thing. Definitely. So, <laughs> well, question number nine, you touched on this a little bit. What's your thought thoughts on the transformer social community, i.e. YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any special shout outs? Anybody that's helped get you started or anybody? Um, you, want to you know, it's, as far as the community is concerned, I enjoy the community as a whole. Um, there are there are people who are more negative than others. Um, a lot of the negativity that I tend to see is on Facebook and parts of Twitter. You know, um, I'm not a big fan of Twitter, and and Facebook is, eh, you know, but YouTube has been more positive um as far as the community is concerned i would say i i you know kind of pick my battles when i go onto the different message boards and 
you know, I kind of ghost a little bit. I'll start looking at like people's posts and what they're what they're talking about, so I can kind of get a, a pulse about what the you know Transformers community has, has is talking about and what they feel. Um, you know, most of it has been positive. The negative seems to come mostly from those who did not grow up on Generation One. Don't understand why I love Generation One um, and why it's uh why 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 it holds a special place for me and why like you know why we we keep holding on to the original you know so fondly that like everything that comes after it it's like well does it hold a candle to generation one in the way that you know that it should or you know why do we keep rebooting why why do we keep hitting the reset button why can't we make one unified universe anymore like it's it's <laughs> still amazes me that this day and age there's some gimmicks that g1 had that modern toys have yet to touch like the power yep. masters the pretenders yep. and it's a popular gimmick but could you imagine pretenders with today's technology yeah i've talked about this before is that like i would love to see uh, a series start with the 87 toy line and go through 1990 you know there, there is more Transformers than the 84 and 85 cast. You know, even the 86 cast was good. But I would venture to say that the 87 cast in 88 and 89, there's a lot of room for story with them and can yeah, grow. To the cartoon characters, the ones we know via television. I mean, yep. the 87 through on cast, they're the ones that made up the comics. Right. I mean, think about Scorponok was leader of the Decepticons. For more issues in Marvel than any of the Megatron was put together. Yeah. Then yeah, Me Megatron. I don't know what it was, but like, like Buddy Ansky himself made Megatron to be this big scary bad guy, and yet he didn't make him the leader of the Decepticons like the cartoon did. Before, you know. But when everyone thinks of Megatron, at least as far as G one Megatron, they think the cartoon. You know, when you think of when you think of Optimus Prime, you want to hear that Peter Cullen voice, you know. Um, when you think, when I think of Bumblebee, I think of him as the kid brother that is a liaison to the human characters, you know. And he's trying to impress everybody else, you know. So, which is kind of why he needs to be able to talk, you mm -hmm. know. Um, let, let the junkions be the if, the not ones who can't talk. Keep uh, jumping in on top of you. Uh, if you remember, Trailbreaker was originally the buddy in the original series. And it's like then they decided to give uh, Spike and Bumblebee that partnership. Well, like he was just he was just there like spying on the Decepticons. I think Hound. You're thinking of Hound. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Hound was kind of the buddy character, but that's because I, 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 you know, Hound was was prominently used though. His holograms were used quite a bit. Um. You know, even in, even in what was it, Insecticon Syndrome? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that he, he uses holograms to be able to save everybody and fire in the sky. He uses holograms to save everyone. Heavy Metal War. Gosh, I should do a Hound retrospective soon enough. <laughs> you know, he's, and he's, and he's got the military stars on his, uh, you know, on his vehicle. Oh, no, I said Trailbreaker probably calls. I just got him and I'm dying to do an intro so I can open him out of the box and mess around with him. Yeah, you must be getting old, Patriot. What I you need is a force field. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the gray, man. I am getting old. I need this needs to go. <laughs> you didn't capture that, but <laughs> what you need is a force field. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, right. But if I wanted to shout people out, oh sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I might as well do, do start doing the shout outs because. Um, you know, when I first started, I mean, there weren't as many Transformers YouTubers out there five years ago. Um, you know, at the time, the ones that I, the only, the only like ones that I knew about were Diamond Bolt, which I didn't even know who Diamond Bolt was until like maybe like halfway, like into starting doing YouTube. And then he stopped getting into Transformers uh, and he completely went off. Like, he's like, I don't, I'm not really into Transformers as much anymore. Uh, Kamen and Cam um t fan page 101 those three in particular they uh they um i've noticed i mean if they are transformers fan well Bro tf t fan page 101 he's still a hardcore transformers fan but like it's like they kind of like 
went off and did their own thing. Whereas like, I would say what, what like retro nostalgic nerd, you, um, Kato, the, all the Rejecticons, Inutabi, Sarnumspa. <laughs> I, oh. I, I have a hard time saying his name. <laughs> um, who has, who else? Uh, I mean, input Crimson Raptors, um, you know, heck even like the big toy reviewers like Emgo, um, you know, I'll watch, you know, them every once in a while. Um, you know, heck even, uh, who else? Uh, like, uh, I know just like so many people out in the community. It's like, I, who else can I, well, who can I shout out to that? Like that I've, I've at least worked with or, you know, done videos with and people are, are you know, I've been cool. Um, and if I miss anybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, the black gentleman, there we go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. Like I said, I love this community. This has amazed me. I made better friends yeah. doing this than all my years in the service. And I, I feel Command, like Commander Radix is one. Actually, he used to be known. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting, oh, but Pri Pri Primus Prime 22 is what he used to be known as. Uh, but now he's known as Commander Radix. Um, but he he has he he like he'll do a Transformers video and then he'll do something completely not Transformers related. So like it's. <laughs> Like I, I, I'm like it's not even, not even in the same like genre of stuff. La lazy eyebrow reviewer, yeah. <laughs> Thanks to him, he was the only way I was able to transform my masterpiece Megatron. I watched his video step step by step to get that transform. That's one transformer I've transformed once, and that's enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like some some of the big names, Pia, Thu, um. You know, I think I, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Chris McFeely actually like works for um, like he works with IDW or works for IDW or maybe he like side contracts with them. I'm not you know, sure. I don't know. I don't Grand know. Collector Never worked with him, but I've seen a bunch of his videos. Yeah, Graham, the Collector 75 was my go to for years. Anytime I wanted to. Uh see what a G1 figure was like. That was the guy I always went to. And it was like funny. I mean, and when he, he actually subscribed to my channel, just blew my mind. <laughs> great guy. Kato's collection. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it, buddy. K yeah, Kato, guys, guys. Target yes. hunter. He's got a target near him and I have him. It's funny. He's my Terminator hunter. <laughs> obsessed with these NECA Terminators. I absolutely love these figures. And I've discovered when you're a Transformer reviewer and you jump ship to review something else, nobody watches it. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Like, if you try to do a He-Man uh, video or a, uh, a Godzilla video, like, will people watch it? Um, who else, uh, you know, just to see who else, uh, I'm looking at, like, people's lists. Because people are, are, are listing everybody that they, uh, that they uh, watch as well. Um, I've met Jim Sorensen, who actually wrote the um, hieroglyphics that are used on Transformers products oh, before. Maybe. Yeah. Um, he actually wrote the book. Um, what was it? A couple of the different Transformers hardcover books. Um, but yeah. yeah, like everyone's calling all these names out and it's like, I've seen a lot of them. I've seen a lot of them, whether I've worked with them or not, like T-Man or TJ Omega, like I know who they are, but I may and may or may not have interacted with them. So it's not like a, and I don't, I don't consider it a, uh, like if I don't know you like an insult, like, Hey, if I get to know you, cool. Like, like that's just the way I, I, way I look at it is, um, I have no, um, no animosity towards anyone else in the Transformers community at all. And if I'm, you know, similar to someone else, or if I'm compared to someone else, maybe I can say I can take that as a compliment. Um, but at the same time, I do my own thing to be my own, you know, YouTuber. So like, I, and I've worked with a lot of the, worked with a lot of you guys. I worked with you Patriot before, like we've done videos before, you know, doing live streams or like we are doing now. Um, and if I don't, you know, it's just because either, schedule or we just haven't had the opportunity you know 
especially now that we're all stuck at home. We can't do much else, but I'm you know, I have to go to work every day. <laughs> you still work a full-time job. Oh yeah. Lucky. All right. <laughs> Wrap things up with our uh, YouTube questions with our last one. Number 10. Do you have any channel goals for the new year? Well, I guess I wrote this a long time ago. Oh yeah. That's close enough. Do you have any channel goals for the new year? And where can our viewers find you? Plug yourself. Because okay. I think everybody knows you anyway. I know, right? Well, I'm sure a lot of people you know, who are watching right now probably do know or have watched my videos before. Um, you know, Rodimus Primal is my main channel. Rodimus Primal Talks is my second channel. My second channel, I need to get back and do stuff with, <laughs> put more content out. Um, but again, I would need to do more. I, I want to do more Godzilla stuff. I want to do Star Wars stuff. I want to do you know, He-Man, She-Ra, uh, Ninja Turtles, all that stuff on my second channel. But it's a matter of being able to have time to do it. My my main channel goal right now, I'm at, sitting at, what, 77,000 subscribers now. Wow. Um, I would love to get to 100K. Absolutely love to get to 100K. I have worked now for five years growing my YouTube channel, trying to get my videos to continue to to, to increase in view count. And if I can, it's it's a matter of hard work, you know, uh, putting more content out that people will watch and hope that they subscribe and they enjoy my content. And if they, you know, even if they have an issue, issue with my own opinion, <laughs> you know, um, at least I'll try to, you know, be I, I'd rather be honest, you know, about my opinions. You know, I'd rather be, you know, tell you the truth and not try to like lie to you and say like oh i love michael bay's movies you know i'd rather tell you the truth like no i don't really care for it but i will talk about the this about whatever and and be cool about it you know if i like the new earthrise cartoon i'll be honest with it if i don't like it i'll be honest with you you know i'd rather be that way um but uh yeah that's one of my goals is and to get my view counts up to get more people watching my videos and talking about my videos Cause like you said, you watch my videos like while you're at work, you know, and I would love more people to be continually be watching my stuff um, and, and to enjoy it. Cause that's to, you know, keep, to keep the momentum going, you know, keep the growth going. Yeah, a lot so, of people don't realize how much work this actually involves. I can tell you firsthand, you like, um, like, my videos start like the, let's just say one of my typical retrospective videos, I write a script. I have to do the research for it. So if I don't know about uh, XYZ character was in the Dreamwave comics, I mean, I, I, I know the Dreamwave comics pretty well, or the IDW comics. If I don't know that that character was in the comics or was only a cameo, I have to go hunting for the information in that universe for that character. Um, so I'll do all of that so that when I write a script, of course, I'm always focused on the generation one stuff, but like I'll end up, you know, focused on the G1 stuff and then I'll talk about it and then I'll make sure I, I hit my other points for the rest of the things with the character and, you know, get a, a cohesive script done. And then I have uh, another guy who was actually in the comments who is mentioning the fact that I do uh, talk with him because He's much better in English than I am, <laughs> you know, to help proofread my script. But once I've got the script done, I got to record it. I got to edit it. All of my coughs and flubs and ums and ahs and uhs, you know, or when I'll say something and kind of go, uh, 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 and I got to like stop for a moment and get a drink of water like I'm about to do right now. And, uh, you know, then I'll, um, what's it called? It, uh, you know continue the script until I'm done recording it. Then I'll edit it all out. Then I got to get the images that I need. So if I need toy, toy images, if I have the toy, I'll try and take pictures of the toy. If I need pictures of something, I'll, I'll Photoshop it and put it all together and, you know, get clips from the, uh, you know, using the clips from the episodes that I need to and, you know, editing it all in there. And that takes me hours, hours on end. So you figure a good 10, 15, 20 minute retrospective video, that's going to take me a week, two weeks to make, you know, 
minimum, you know, on, on those videos because I'm doing all the, all, all of the editing. Once I've gotten the script written, it's the editing I'm all doing on my own. You know, it's just me sitting in front of my computer for 10, 12, 16 hours sometimes. All of a sudden I look, it's two o'clock in the morning and I realize that I'm like, I need to go to bed, <laughs> you know? And uh, that's how much work I put into these videos, so. Wow. What's yeah. the script that you speak of? Hmm? What's this script that you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> that's where I run into a lot of problems because I shoot from the hip for everything. And I'll well, from my reviews on those, well, she, I skip the articulation on this guy. I skip this on that. About the only thing I am dead set or dead set on exactly the same in every video is the don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon. And I've got it timed right to match up with my animation. <laughs> you know what's funny is like when I started doing the retrospectives and discussion videos, I kind of got into a groove of saying, but what do you think? Right. Like that's like one of my things that I say all the time. But what do you think? You know, is this da 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 da? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. And be sure to, you know, I've got many more Transformers discussions and retrospectives coming soon. So stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one. So I say that like all the time or, I, you know, but all of my other videos, like my news videos and my, um, you know, my toy reviews, that's all off the hip. You know, that's me. I really like this or I don't like care for this or this is, you know, the RC's hand. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll send it back if it's more than a twist, right? <laughs> like that joke literally came to my head, like as I was holding the toy. You know? I have done a whole review on just a joke that popped in my head. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw my Nemesis Prime review, but I rushed to get that review out because of the chicken nugget joke with the pudding shit or whatever <laughs> came with it. That, that was the whole idea of getting that review done. I was like, got to put this chicken nugget dipping sauce <laughs> joke in here. And then uh, thanks to Bert, the stormtrooper, I came up with a joke for this guy. So he's being rushed into production right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And then yes, the other one that I see that in the, uh, in the comment section is, but that, that, that'll be a discussion for another day. Um, you know where I got that from? You remember Conan, the barbarian? Great flick. Are we talking? Right? About Are we talking about that? Book? That will be a story for another time. Exactly. <laughs> that's where it came from. That's where, and that'll be a discussion for another day came from. Um, I started saying it, I think right from the jump. And I made sure I, I tried to say it almost every single discussion video. But that'll be a discussion for another day. Um, and that's where the catchphrase came. And the hat. I do not wear hats. And I thought, I need I need a gimmick. Patriot Prime, my veteran hat, and the hoo -ah. And I have done that since day one. I think <laughs> one video, I missed hoo -ah in it. hoo -ah in. There's a I just invented a new word. hoo -ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this wraps up my 10 questions. Now I'm going to open up the floor for the viewers. We may go for another half hour. I don't want to keep this too long. But first, Rodimus and I got together right before we started. Black Friday is coming up this week. And mm -hmm. both of us are having sales on our Teespring store. So if you want an awesome looking Patriot Prime Review shirt or an awesome Rodimus Primal shirt, if you go to my Teespring link, which is in the comment section of this video, and here I'm getting really technical now. And you use this code, PPR Black Friday, you get 40% off your order. That's t shirts, hoodies. I've got masks. That's a cool mask. I like that one. So, my page, uh, this code, 40% off. That sale's going on until the 30th of the month. Rodimus, your turn okay, to pitch. Yeah. RPBLKFDY. That's the code. Um, I actually put it on my community page. And yeah, this is my mask. So <laughs> this, this is one of the masks that you can actually get. I have one as Megatron. I have one as Galvatron and Grimlock. I tried doing Soundwave and Starscream, but they didn't look right. And I was thinking about doing one for RC, um, you know, just because. But 
Um, I also have the t-shirts and I have, you know, sweatshirts, onesies and coffee mugs and stuff. So I made a gator today. So it's like, it's the PPR logo. So you got half of his face and a neck gator. <laughs> That's cool. All That's right. Cool. There's our, there's our uh, plugs for our shirts. Now I'm going to open up the chat. We got, it's uh, we're at an hour now. I'm going to do this for about a half hour. I'm going to open up the chat for any questions. I want you to bear with me. I'm trying to read these as fast as I can on the side. If I don't pick you, don't be offended. I just missed you. This is kind of hard to do. So anybody got a question for either me or Rodimus, now's the time. Oh, one other thing, one other thing that I do want to uh, to plug uh, is uh, the fact that I am also working. Uh, we have been working on it for two years, but you know, progress has been pretty slow uh, because we're still trying to figure it out is we are working on a video game that is a video game similar to Ninja Gaiden from on the NES. Um, oh. Yeah. So, you know, we're working on a, a video game that, uh, you know, that's, that, that's, that's uh, Duke Tugo is uh, the person who's, um, you know, is mentioning that. I've seen and, it. Uh, Couple times, like, ah, oh, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. All yeah, right. yeah. Wait. Devil Hunter Mayumi is actually the name of the video game that we're working on with a little bit of mix of Castlevania in there. And that, it's, I would more so say Japanese folklore, um, kind of thing. But yeah, it's one of the cool things that I'm working on. All right. So, what From do we got here? 98, 2006. I was in Iraq from uh, 2004, 2005. And after that, I thought, I'm done. I had one day where right past my ear. And I'm like, I'm done. That's it. Let's do something a little safer. <laughs> my brother was actually a Marine. I think he went in in 2009, I want to say. He graduated high school in 2008. Um, and... He spent five years. He was in Afghanistan. He went first. He went to Italy. He went. Where did he go? Where did they send him? I forgot where they sent him. And they sent him in Italy. And then they sent him to uh, Afghanistan for a while. And you know, he said that that was like uh, <laughs> you know a, a shocking experience to say the least. Wow. And that some of the stuff he won't, um, you know, some of the stuff he won't um, discuss. Yeah, because just some of the stuff that he saw. We had a 10-year window where we couldn't talk about anything. After that 10 years was up, go right ahead. Oh, wow. So, all right, here's one for you is, do you prefer Soundwave or Shockwave? I really love Soundwave. Um, I love, I, I, I like Shockwave. The, you know, I know people really love the comic book Shockwave. But I, I, I really love the cartoon Shockwave because he's that like that loyal left person who's left to keep charge on Cybertron. But Soundwave I love because you've got this loyal guy who will do anything for Megatron. Uh, the way he can spy, the way he can he can get into places, and he'll, he'll transform into a cassette player, and you, he'll you'll pick him up and like bring him in. Like it's just a, and then plus he's got an, a, a living army you know, in his chest, you know, he can literally eject everybody. Plus the voice. They vocoded that voice. Same character in the comics and the cartoon. Which Soundwave? Yeah. Yeah. Soundwave's character was pretty much the same for the most part. You know, that when are we getting together for a backyard cookout? Gotta um, wait till COVID's over, man. <laughs> as soon as New Jersey doesn't says that I, that I'm allowed to leave the state. Cause apparently People in New Jersey are not allowed to leave, according to our governor. So, hey, at least um, you wear your mask in your house. I've seen where that's happened in some places. Yeah, that's uh, I, you. You know, in fact, there are police departments that have said that they will not uh, obey our gut. And I know it's not to get into politics, but it is has to do with COVID more than anything else. Is that like they won't enforce this? You know it. We're not gonna. If you have 15 people in your house for 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 Thanksgiving, <laughs> you know we we're not gonna answer those calls. Sorry, we love our community more than we love the governor. Yeah. So let's see here. 
How long did it take for you to reach 1,000 subscribers? I'm getting very close, but I feel like it's slow. It's going to be slow. It's, it's been, been slow um, this year, growing for a lot of us. Um, I would say that this year has been a slower grow growth rate than previous years, even though I, I even though like I've hit a lot of milestones. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Eventually, you'll you know people will find your videos and find value to your videos. Um, if you can um, increase your production value and find out what makes you you to bring to the table um and don't try people, to copy anybody else because you will get called out on that quick very quick very quick you know what's funny people actually said that i sounded like the angry video game nerd when i first started i don't sound like the angry video game nerd <laughs> i mean we both live in new jersey but i think i'm on, i'm the only redneck from west virginia that does this so i've got, I've got <laughs> 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 All right, this is another one for you. Can you do an Overlord retrospective one day? I want to, especially after I've already done God Jin Rai. And I'd be all interested in that. I love Overlord. Let's see. Where else? Where else? Go to Jin Rai. All right, here's an interesting one. Do you think that Earthrise was ruined thanks to COVID? From a distribution standpoint, yes. Yeah. Because everything I've had to get has been online. Everything. And not just distribution, but I think quality control is that they probably don't have as many workers because they have to do the whole social distancing and stuff like that. And they're not keeping up on their quality control uh, in their own factories. And on top of that, the um, what's it called? Uh, um, the distribution has been terrible, you know, absolutely terrible. My stores are just bare you know, where I live, um, people will find, uh, people will have like literally 35 grapples on the shelf. And I don't even see, I haven't seen grapple on the shelf at my stores. My store right now is, I was just there today, three Netflix hot links, three Netflix Megatrons, Wave 1 Deluxes, and Cyberverse. I looked out and I found the Alicon and Smokescreen one day it was on this little end cap. It was just this little narrow two tier tower. Huh. And actually it had smoke screen, Alicon and airwave, but I'd already got airwave from Amazon. Wow. And I haven't seen anything new. Now there's some uh, studio series too, but it's the deluxe size studio series. What I've been told is that Walmart, and this is why I think Walmart as an exclusive uh, pl place for exclusives is the worst. Walmart has a policy with their ordering with their stores in a, in a, in a radius. So I want to say like, let's say 30 miles, there might be like what, seven or eight Walmarts, you know, I mean, they're all over the place. Right. And they've gotten bigger since COVID since all the mom and pop sh shops got shut down and Walmart has been the only place in town to go. Well, um, the, uh, you know, the, the Walmart will only carry one Walmart will carry all the stuff that's leader class and Voyager class, and they'll carry the G1 reissues. They'll carry everything. But that that's the one store that has everything. And then the three nearby stores don't won't carry a single Transformers toy above thirty five dollars. So you'll never see leader class. You'll never see. um uh, G1 reissues. You'll never see um, Hot Link. You'll never see, you know, any of the the leader. You know, like I said, the leader class stuff. All that stuff you'll never find. And they rarely stock with what they do have shelf space for. They'll have like two pegs, and that'll include Cyberverse stuff. Yeah, it's it's nuts. And then you look at the new He Man section is just all over the place. That would be nice. But the only thing is, is that like. I've seen the He-Man section. It's all He-Man and Skeletor, and they haven't stocked the, the the other ones. Wow. I have seen Battle Cat though. We've got Battle Cat. The win it's not, what is that thing called? Sky Sled, Wind Razor. Are you thinking of the um, the one with Prince Adam? I haven't got that one yet because I'm not. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, what videos did I have the most fun doing, and what are the worst ones I've done? 
All right. Um, the most fun ones I've done, there's a few. There's quite a few that I had a lot of fun doing. I had a lot of fun doing that punch counter punch video. Um, anytime I did a video that the sky sled, okay. Um, the, any video that I did like a, a reference to something else, I had a lot of fun doing like my triple changers video. I did a reference to airwolf and because of that, I went back and I did what the combaticons as the A team as I did the A team intro with the combaticons. I did the Airwolf intro, but with Springer. And I did uh, Hot Rod as Knight Rider. That's so cool. And it was just really fun to do those videos, but they stemmed from me doing a retrospective. And I thought about that character and was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if they did something with this, like the intro to this show? People have asked me, like, can you do like Charlie's Angels with, uh, you know, with the female Autobots? And it's like, it's kind of hard. There's not a lot of footage. Um, you know, people have asked me to do like different intros like that. And they were fun. It was a lot of fun doing those videos. Um, the worst ones I would say that I've done... Um, I would probably say the ones that need a revamp. The Primus and the Quintessons one, I'm not really pleased with. I'm not pleased with the um, the uh, Where Does Optimus Prime's trailer go? Because I feel like it's incomplete. You know, I felt that way with Rumble and Frenzy, and that's why one of the one of the reasons why I enjoyed going back to it. Um, and. I would probably say now I loved doing Galvatron. I really had a fun time doing Galvatron, but that took so much out of me because it was 23 minutes of Galvatron. Cause I had to cover the G one cartoon and the UK comics and then every other Galvatron after that. And that was already at 15 minutes. <laughs> so good God. That was like, it took a lot out of me. Not that it was a good video. It just took a long time to make. And also, I loved doing the RC video this year. I was disappointed that it did not get the attention that it deserved. Because it was around the time of my uh, wedding anniversary, because I've been married now 10 years. And it was a dedication to my wife. And I would hope that it would have been like this explosive video like oh my god he did an rc video you know let's you know let's let's watch that i was hoping to get two three hundred thousand views out of that and i'm struggling to reach over 100k so and i was disappointed in that so that's more so my disappointment in the results of the video more less than the um you know how you know one worst ones i've done so <laughs> Well, for me, my absolute favorite videos and the ones I have the most fun doing are my NECA figures. I have a blast doing those figures. I've done Terminators. I've done the Friday the 13th ones. I research the movie. I find the clips that match up with the weapons or accessories. And it, like in some of my Jason videos, I've even designed my own intro with the Jason theme. In one of my videos, Dylan and I both dressed up as Jason to film <laughs> the figures but then as like you said i put in so much work with those NECA reviews they don't get hits at all yeah i know how you feel my recent one, this is this is one of my top 10 for the year i can tell you that right now and yeah. this video let me get the uzi nine millimeter yeah that was, uh, <laughs> this one this is the one with the uzi are you sarah connor Oh, here's a fun fact. If you look at that scene where he's going through the phone book for Sarah Connor, and if you pause it, there's a Jay Connor right above her, a John Connor. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. But anyway, those are my favorite. I have a blast with Necker reviews, but nobody watches them. I've got a whole bunch of predators that I want to review. But I'm like, as much fun as I have doing it, I don't want to you know, waste my time more or less. Yeah, I was trying to do a retrospective videos on my Godzilla on, on, on the Godzilla movies, and I was trying to do it in the order, and unfortunately, they just did not get the um, the the attention that they deserved. 
You know, I think it's almost like we're actors. We're typecast. Like, yeah. Transformer reviewer. Why is he reviewing a NECA toy? Yep. But as far as the worst ones I've done, I hate reviewing studio series figures. I always screw them up. I either shit pops off of them while I'm trying to transform them. And I just give up. I've done all, I think I've done the, uh, I call him Mad Max Megatron. That one I could not transform on camera. I did the uh, car sound wave. That thing broke while I was transforming it on camera. I think the only ones that went off flawlessly was uh, Shatter, the Jet, and the Jeep Bumblebee. And after that, I'm like, I'm done. No more Studio Series figures for me. Well, except for the stuff that's coming out for the Studio Series 86. I uh, need, that's, that's not the same. That's not I need those figures. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I, I wonder if they're going to do a Studio Series RC. I wonder. Let's see. Yeah. Why, thank you, Duke to go. I appreciate that. Yeah, he lives in Virginia. Oh, yeah, you're right below me. Which area? Um, I know he's in, I think he's in Southern Virginia. I'm in Southern West Virginia, so he must be down on the other end. I'm trying to find, see if I've missed any other questions. Like I said, I'm trying my best. These have been flying by. Hampton so Roads, he says he lives in. Let's see. I don't know where that is. <laughs> I can say I live in the Jersey, like near the Jersey Shore. Um, I live near um, where where they would go and film um, the Jersey Shore. Literally, my dad's actually run into Snooky at a store because <laughs> this where they go to shop is where we live. So, um, what selects toy would I like to see come out of Kingdom? Uh, with repaints, new heads, molds. Okay. Um, let me think this one through. I wonder if they would do pack rat at a rat trap. Hmm. I wonder about that one. Grimlock out of Dinobot. Yep, because there was a Beast Wars Grimlock. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Grimlock out of that. And he needs the actual faceplate. You can't just do the 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 snarly um beast face of Dinobot on Grimlock. Um I wonder if they would do T Rex out of Megatron. I was wondering that the other day. That was the Beast was it, uh, Beast Machines. Yeah it was Beast Machines Dinobots. Red yep. Dinosaurus based off of uh Beast Wars Megatron. I'm trying to think who who all we're getting. Um, but I mean, just out of what we've seen, I wonder, like, because th that's that's really like the deciding factor, like what we only what we've seen so far. I hope we get pipes out of Huffer, like if they remold Huffer into pipes. But I hope that he's a regular, you know. Um, trying to think of like other characters. Um, Dirge Clonus. You know who I'm talking about? I sure do. Yep. The, the head of all the kingdom figures we're getting. Yep. Dirge Clonus. It's the, the Dirge colored Cyclonus in wow. Five Faces of Darkness Part 5. <laughs> Prepare Autobots to die in darkness. <laughs> um, Pipes was announced. I think he was. Yeah. I would love to see Gears and uh, and Swerve. Absolutely would love to see that. Art Fire, yep, is a no-brainer. Yes. Oh, and welcome, T-Man. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. What's going on, T-Man? Jay Holla. <clears throat> um, I want a Thunderwing. He was actually, remember when they were doing the voting fan vote figures? Yep. Thunderwing was part of that. What? Where is our Thunderwing? One of my all-time favorite characters and Thunderwing. favorite pretenders. Of characters I want to see... Thunderwing, Deathsaurus, Star Saber. Um, I would love to see, yes, th th those ones in particular. Thunderwing is another one. Bludgeon. Bludgeon, for sure. Octopunch. Bludgeon. What's that? Mayhem Attack Squad. Yeah, yeah. Needle Nose. They, they were supposed to give us Needle Nose. 
And they didn't. The other three Autobot uh, Target Masters, too. We have yeah, Scoot. Point Blank, Sure Shot, and uh, – well, they already gave us Crosshairs. Yeah. So they need Point Blank and uh, – I totally should do a, a Thunderwing retrospective. Eh. That's yeah. one of the years I'd like to do over. I look some of my old stuff. I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I was terrible back then. He was he was a heck of a villain too. Like I said, you the know? only Decepticon to wield the Matrix, and he corrupted it. I wonder about that. You know, it was he really a Decepticon? Hmm. Well, we'd like to, but it'll never happen. I certainly do. It's why this will never ever leave my hand, my 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 uh my possession. I got the OG back there. Yeah, mine can fire pellets. Yeah, you, know? uh, you win. <laughs> hmm. If Beast Wars Megatron turned into his own version of Galvatron, what do you think he should turn into? He almost um, well, became that with the dragon, but I can always almost imagine him turning into like a King Ghidra type thing. With yeah. Three, three heads well, and everything. If you think about it, if you think about it, you had the, uh, in he, it wasn't that, but I mean, he had the, 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 the trans metal T-Rex mode. Then he had the dragon when he merged with Megatron's actual spark, but then he had, um, he had robots in disguise Megatron, right? Which was the two-headed dragon. He was a multi-changer, turned into a bat, turned into a jet, turned into a, 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 the, a weird bat car and a hand, right? And then he had the, the, the weird griffin mode when he became Galvatron, which actually wasn't Megatron. It was Gigatron and Devil Gigatron. But Galvatron was in Beast Wars 2 and his brother Megastorm, right? Mm -hmm. And he turned into a purple dragon and a drill-like thing wasn't that beast wars galvatron i think it was it was beast wars second galvatron yep i almost won that on ebay and lost it for like a dollar oh wow I was... wow no oh, here's a interesting one if i can get to pull up where'd it go favorite human villains <clears throat> uh, from from the actual Transformers cartoon, um, I, Transformers across the board. Doctor Arkaville, Circuit Breaker from the comics. Even though she Circuit Breaker was another one, and uh, Lord Zarak because he kind of was a human villain. Yep. We shall see, Galvatron. We shall see. <laughs> I always thought the uh, comic Lord Zarak they had to take in their cues. From Ronnie Cox from Robocop. Dick Jones. Yeah. yeah I like Dick Jones. Well, I, I I started to, you know, one thing that if you notice about Nebulos in the in the Marvel comics was that uh they certainly wanted to draw uh certain people in that in those books. If you know what I'm talking about. Around that time frame, a lot of a lot of characters in the comic books around that time were drawn a certain way. <laughs> Excuse me. We're men. <laughs> Villain. I did like Silas in uh, Prime. We talked about him earlier. The one. Yeah, he was a really good villain. Plus, he was friggin' uh, Clancy Brown. Yep. You can't get wrong, Clancy Brown. Oh, Doctor Arkaville. Yeah. That's what I was saying before. Yeah. All Lord right. Zara, we are. Better. Oh, go ahead. Worst human villain. No, I mean, well, maybe Giga and Mega might might be. <laughs> Gillian Jinrai was uh, not a villain; he was a hero. All right. Well, I've been at this an hour and a half. I know my son's probably chomping at the bit to get his game fixed. <laughs> so, uh, first off, Rodimus, thank you so much for joining me for a. Another sit rep episode. I always enjoy sitting down and talking with you and uh, everybody else in the chats. Thank you so much for hopping in. If I missed you, I apologize. We will be doing these again and hopefully we'll catch you next time. Uh, we can I talk for hours. We literally can. Yeah, no kidding. We, we've done it for about three hours. 
one night. We talked we, about we one did, o'clock. We did. That was fun. All right. And uh, next up, I wish each and every one of you a very, very happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Good luck hunting if you're going out on Black Friday. And hope the police don't come knocking on your door when you're carving your turkey. <laughs> So until next time, guys, till all are one. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. This is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo-ah! Hoo-ah! <laughs> Odd Pauls and in broadcast.